everything Chris everything Chris everything Chris everything 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 Chris everything Chris everything Chris everything everything Chris Was that? Right. We'll Talk us through that journey, man. Talk us through that Manchester Magic journey, man. Manchester, um, that was probably one of the best decisions I made joining that club because it kind of put okay. me on the map, sort of thing. Um, okay. And just the team, man. The team was just stacked, and everyone got on. You know, we did the treble that year. You know, it, oh. It, um, it was like everyone was together. It was the most harmonious team I've been on. You know, we go out together, we, you know, live together, play together. It was, it was a great experience, man. Was that, was that D1? Yeah, yeah, D1. And that, that's where I really, like, I don't think I was really respected that much as a baller before that. But when we okay. got there... We, uh, and I know loads of people are going to be like, he's talking about it again, but we, uh, <laughs> we did the treble and in the playoffs. So in the playoffs, right, I was starting all season yeah. and it was like the final four. And when the final four was on back then, it was like you played the semi-final Saturday and then the finals on Sunday. So yeah. I remember in the semi-finals, Jeff Jones, he, he didn't start me. Like, and yeah, I, yeah, was, yeah. I had like such an ego about like starting and stuff yeah. like that. And it's like, so I was, I was angry, man. So, um, I killed that game. We played Bristol Flyers, killed that game. I had like 26. Yeah, yeah. I was like, I'm gonna start in the final, you know. Like, again, didn't start yeah, in the final. He's done. <laughs> I was like, oh, but in the game, he brought me on, he brought me and Orlan on in like five after five minutes and like uh, hit my Orland. first three hit another Orland. three is this Orland Jackman Orland yeah yeah Orland Jackman man I didn't know I didn't know he was that magic yeah yeah, yeah. Sorry, so it's like a yeah. X factor sort of thing coming off the bench oh, and just giving I didn't know energy that. yeah so okay. um, like I hit the first couple of threes and then the game was just a blur and then I ended up with like 25 and uh, when they were announcing the MVP, they started reading off my stats. I was like, four, five from five from three, nine from nine from the line, four from four from field goal percentage. And I realized yeah. I hadn't missed the whole game. The whole oh, game was 100%. So I was like, yeah, that's what kind of got put you up there. Side. And then, yeah, from there, I was able to make a little career. Ah, oh, that's dope, man. So talk about what's his name, Orland there, then, man. How was he like? Because he must have been young back then when he, when he, when he. Was yeah, he was what nineteen, I think. Um, he just had energy, man. Like it was, he was the X factor on that team because that team. If I tell you about, like, we had yeah. me, Stephen Gill, we had Stephen Gale as well, like a walking bucket. Stephen Gale and um. Stephen Gill. Yeah, both of them. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 Stephen Gill. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's, yeah, he's an automatic yeah. man. Yeah. Orland. We had Duncan Ogilvie as well. Who was, was a um, baller. Was Tintin there as well? Nah, he was at Reading. He was at Reading. So that's who we played against in the final, Reading Rocket. Okay. And then we had like two D1 Americans. And we had a Canadian sharpshooter. It was just like we had two starting fives, man. It was like it was deep. Damn, it was deep. Yeah, it's a shout for one of the best teams in D one, I reckon. In history, damn. It, Manchester United always had a good program, though, man. They really had a great program. Like they had, a, they had to, they had a D three team when I first played at Leeds, and that, that opened yeah. my eyes a bit. Like the their kid, the young kids, still like under eighteen playing in D three, and they were killing people. But I was like, do you know, that's a do you know the only teams in Manchester. What the key yeah. is with Manchester is they have their own facility. So when I was playing there, you're talking about everyone under 18 have access to that gym every day. Serious. So it's like, 
and they're watching us train. Some of them, the kids will shoot with me, like when I'm going for a practice, like just to shoot around. So it was like, that's why their junior programs are so like successful, you know, yeah. um, because they have their own facility. That's the, that's the major thing there. And there's not too much competition. There's only Manchester Magic juniors. Oh. Okay. Now there's a couple of other ones, but yeah, 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 yeah. Was like that was the main one. So they, because you imagine if London had one team, London, yeah, 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 yeah. You know and, Man and I could imagine that with Manchester, from what it sounds like, everyone's fighting for a spot, and if you yeah. had to be yeah. obviously the best of the best, and if you yeah. didn't get exactly. the opportunity, exactly. But in London, it gets a bit more diluted because there's so many teams. So you get two of the best players on each yeah. team. Rather, Manchester, it's just everyone together. So, yeah, it was... Um, no, nah, it was a wicked time, man. Like, my best... Probably my most favourite season in terms of winning and just off the court and, you know, the way they treat you and stuff like that. It, it, it was that's dope, man. Expensive. I think that's one of the main things this country is missing, man. It's like a lot of teams don't have their own facilities. It's always... It's always using... Um, leisure centres or something and then you know you have to book the hall out and they can't practice as much as they like to practice exactly. so I think with Manchester like they said you know the youth was just like the key and they invested into the, they, that's how they invested into the the team more if you know what I mean yeah. they, they weren't yeah. relying on other people that's, that's like, what it is man that is, that's exactly what it is like it was all about like the, the main guy there Joe Forber who was the one yeah. that kind of found John Amici. He didn't want Manchester Magic to go to the BBL because he wanted his younger players to play D1 and not lose their eligibility for America. So yeah. that was their key. It was just their juniors, you know. So That's the same. Sounds like the same setup um, Jimmy Rogers had with Brixton because he never wanted yeah. to go BBL. Nah. He was, he's, his main focus was always the youngest coming up Genius. he said the kids yeah. first and then you lot the kids will follow you so you have to focus on the kids which I like about that yeah and yeah. Leeds had the same similar setup. did you play ever did you ever, did you ever play Leeds at that time or did they come after you we played them in a uh, cup game so it was like when all the leagues so we would play yeah. the teams in D2 and D3 okay. but it, it's funny because Matt Newby um, he coached me at a summer kind of tournament called Street to Elite and like that tournament yeah, was kind of ahead of the game like it was all yeah, about yeah. anti-knife crime and stuff like that and Matt Newby was my coach so my team was like Orlan was on my team on that as well and uh, okay. Matt Newby told me on that day that he was going to try and go like up the leagues and then into the BBL he told me on that day, yeah, yeah. and then to see him do it was like, you know, hats off to you. You know, you, you set out, yeah, yeah. And did it, you know, he had a plan, man. It was sad what happened, you know, because he was doing the right things in the BBO, and then don't know what happened back then. It was just like, yeah, this, oh, this, man. I was like, damn, because as soon as he left, it's like. But now it's just gone downhill because you can't do what he was doing. He had it he, as a manager. He had it on lock. He knew what to do. He had things in the right place. But he's at Worcester now, so he's doing great things there. So I'm sure well, he can turn So newbie, so newbie then. So someone wants to know back then what was newbie like as a coach back then. Um, at that time, right? I'll tell the truth, right? So the people on my team. We were, we were kind of like, who is he? Do you know what I mean? Because he was only coaching D3, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, but he, he was very, like, it was easy to talk to him. So I never met him before. And we sat down and we talked for about an hour about his plans and stuff like that. And, like, I, I think he's really cool. And the fact that, you know, I've kept in contact through my work when I was at Basketball England because yeah. he had loads of junior programs. I funded his Leeds Force Club for like loads of like satellite clubs and different programs to get oh, is involved. It? Yeah, and he, he's always been wicked, man. I like I like Newby. In terms of like him coaching, he just let us do what we wanted that. We just we would our team was just stacked, so he just kinda like just let us do what we were doing. So I don't really know too much about how good he is as a coach sort of thing but 
but he's doing something right, you know. He is right. I remember, I remember him coaching at um, um, Leeds, and the same thing. Some of the guys didn't know how to take him because they didn't respect him as a player as much. But you got to take your hats off again because he was managing the, the the whole facilities. He managed the academy very program. well. He, the program was yeah, like had it locked in. And then, yeah, they went well, up. I, I remember him in D1 when he had land. Pardon? I said, people don't understand how stressful to run that a is. whole program from the top to bottom really is, you know? It is. It's stressful. You know, man. Done a good job. And people always wanted... And what I didn't like, though, I did, did do have to be on his side a lot more of it, is where how people wanted so much from him, but he was giving so much. It's like, it's like what more do you want the man to do that? Like, he's... He's doing this like whatever he used to give me, I used to be fine with it. So yeah, what whatever I take that and then just leave him to it, man, because he doesn't need that extra stress. He used to have conversations with me though, because he used to sit down and tell me things that people were taking liberties with him. And I used to tell him, you know, uh, you know, I'm sorry to hear that, but you know, I can't say anything to that. But you know, he used to, we used to sit and talk about so much stuff, man, like just yeah, life. Yeah. Um, like, he's he had a nice daughter. person, man. He's a yeah. nice, he's a good guy, man. He's a good guy, for sure. In that talk about our children, like we both had children at the time, so you know, mine was a bit older than his, and he was just talking about how they were being a father and studying, and it it was um yeah, it was an interesting time, man. And I saw him again at Worcester, so I went to his game at Worcester, so that was good as well, man. To see, and he seemed a bit more happier there now. He got he got a fresh team and everything, yeah. so he's doing good. He's doing good bits there, man. So shout out to newbie, man. Um, Coach Jones, man. Talk to us about Coach Jones, man, your relationship with him, man. Jeff Jones? Oh, yeah. Man. Do you know what? We hated each other on the court. We <laughs> hated me, honestly. Because if you think he had a team with the guards were me, Stephen Gell and Steph Gill, right? All of us love to shoot, innit? Like, all of us yeah. were trying to score. So, like, he was trying to mould us into, like, a proper, complete basketballer. But we weren't, we were too hard-headed. So, like, on the court, it's like, yeah, I knew he only played me because he knew I was going to score. But off the court, he's he's one of the funniest guys, man, honestly. He's just a joker, (laughs) absolute joker. The whole family, I love the whole family, man. Oh, yeah, he's two sons. Yeah, um, Callum and James and then Georgia Jones as well. Um, And, yeah, his daughter. Yeah, 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 yeah. So... Like he he's just a joker. I remember like he's got a bad back in it. Okay. So he, he walks a bit like like that all the time. And uh and there was one time in practice, right? He went to kinda like sit on a table. Yeah. The table just collapsed, right? So he's on the floor. <laughs> he's on the floor trying to get up. And um, like everyone's like we don't know whether we should laugh. We don't know what yeah, yeah. Like. And uh, I just heard him say, Jesus, Mary and Joseph. Like, that was his favourite term. <laughs> Jesus, Mary and Joseph. And, like, he was trying to get up, but he couldn't get up. You know what I mean? But, like, like a fish, he, man. He, he was funny, man. He was funny. But like, oh, he, he taught me a lot. He taught me a lot, man. Everything, everything. Everything, Chris. Everything, Chris. Everything, Chris. Everything, everything, Chris. Uh.